So let's come back to our good friend uh, Lord Rayleigh and his equation. So we can check out uh, immersion lithography, which is essentially a way to increase your uh, numerical aperture. So what what else can we do to improve or enhance our resolution? So the next set of uh, resolution enhancement techniques that I want to deter, talk to you about are essentially uh, concerning reducing the K or allowing you to operate at a lower K. A good analogy for this technique is that you have a thicker brush. So you have a thick brush and it has a fixed uh, wavelength and you want to uh, you want to print fine strokes using that or you want to print uh, fine features using that. So these uh, next set of resolution enhancement techniques, they allow you to do that by playing tricks either at uh, either with the source of the light you're using or with the mask that you're using. And they essentially you what you can do is you can uh, do a proximity correction, you can introduce a phase shift or you can do an off-axis illumination. So let me describe these um, one by one. The first technique in this uh, bag of tricks that I want to show you deals with interference of light and it's, uh, it's called uh, phase shift uh, mask or PSM. And it involves this very simple concept of physics that if you have two features next to each other and you have light coming in from both of them, the electric fields from uh, these, uh, the first features looks like this, the electric field from the second feature looks like this. And they, if uh, they essentially add up uh, constructively, so there's a constructive uh, interference uh, in the electric field. And intensity, which is essentially a square of the electric field, now looks like this. And uh, they, they, you have a constructive interference between two, its two neighboring uh, features. What uh, what PSM or phase shift mass involves is that now you add a shift in the phase of the light. So you add either extra optical path or you remove some optical path in this uh, light of, uh, in this uh, path of the light from the second feature. So now there's a, a, there's a shift in the phase. So let's say there's a 90 degree shift in the phase of these two lights. And now the electrical fields from these two neighboring patterns looks like these. And when they add up, you essentially get a pattern of electric field which is like this. And uh, intensity again is square of the electric field. So the intensity looks like this. So now what you see is by adding this uh, phase shift, you have been able to resolve the uh, the feature neighboring features very well. In previously, they were uh, interfering with each other, and you are getting this blurred feature. But by adding this uh, phase shift, you are now able to preserve these two uh, features uh, separately. And there are multiple ways you can uh, add this phase shift. So if you're using a quartz mask, you can etch into it to reduce the optical path for this feature. You can add chrome to it to uh, cause this phase shift, or you can essentially have these different depths between two different features. And uh, that these are the multiple ways you can introduce these uh, phase shift. The second of these, uh, this technique, uh, which is um, optical uh, proximity correction, it uh, essentially deals uh, with uh, correcting for both uh, interference and diffraction of light. So you have this well-defined optical system where you know the dimensions exactly, you know the proximity between the different features, you know the, the total dimensions of your system, and so you already know what is going to occur. So you know how many orders of uh, diffraction you're able to capture. You know that uh, there will be interference. So how about we reverse, uh, we reverse engineer that phenomena. So that is what this uh, optical proximity correction or OPC does. So it, uh, it knows that you know we have finite capabilities. We can maybe capture one or two or three or four orders of diffraction. It knows that there will be interference so we know that suppose we print a feature like this on our mask it actually in reality because of this interference and this diffraction it prints like this so it uh, what, uh, what we ask ourselves is can we do better can we actually since we know what these effects of interference and diffraction are can we actually design a mask like this so if we design a mask which has this additional features over here 
which uh, tend to overcome some of uh, these effects it helps in uh, printing a better feature so uh, this one is close to more close to what we actually wanted so that is what um, opc or optical uh, proximity correction involves and uh, here's a nice picture showing uh, opc and uh, face shift mask uh, in action so this is what we want to print so this is our template this is what we actually want to print and so this is the design layout we want to achieve and if you use, look at the mask which is used to print this so this is the mask which is used to print this and if you look at this this looks nothing like this so you you, you can broadly see some lines that you want to print here but you have these so many extra features and if you take a AFM if you take a atomic force a microscope image uh, what you see on you see the topography of this mask so you also see that it's not a not a flat mask there are a lot of features on it so these are probably phase shift uh, probably for shifting the phase uh, of the light so you have uh, uh, these OPC features you also have these 3d features in your topography of the mask and both of them essentially are trying to correct for this uh, interference and diffraction of light and uh, what you see here is the actual pattern which is uh, printed on the wafer and though the mask looks uh, nothing like this the mask looks nothing like this but you see a lot of uh, correspondence between what actually printed and what you wanted to print so there is uh, corresponding between the feature you wanted to achieve and what printed but the mask of it uh, looks nothing like that it correct it has these extra features for uh, uh, OPC it also has this 3d topography for correcting for this um, uh, face uh, face shape so so far the two techniques that I described to you that is uh, optical proximity correction and uh, face shift mass they both are uh, related to the mass so these are both things you do on the mask uh, to achieve uh, a better resolution so we ask ourselves when you look at this uh, optical path that can we do something on the source of the light? Can we do something about the illumination of the light? So one simple thing that we can do is uh, essentially use an off axis illumination. So over here we are shining the light at uh, zero degree or at normal uh, incidence. We can also shine light at an uh, at an angle and what it does it now it achieves uh, helps you achieve uh, a better diffraction pattern so you get this uh, much higher angular re reflection and you can uh, you can have multiple of these angles at which light uh, can come in and that is essentially known as uh, off axis illumination and uh, that's also a technique that is used to improve our feature the other thing that we can do uh, on the on the source side is we can uh, now play with the shape of the source as well so this is suppose a conventional source which has just one hole now your source could have multiple holes and each of these could be targeting light coming in at a different angle so this could be a quadruple uh, quadruple axis illumination or it could be an annular ring like uh, illumination where you have light coming in from all angles and uh, more recently what people have uh, uh, started doing is you can turn on and off individual of these uh, pixels on your mask so they have made this uh, pixelated uh, light source and you can uh, turn on and off light coming from different uh, pixels and all this, all this helps in essentially improving again your image quality. So if I was to use one word to describe what has happened uh, in this field uh, so far for resolution enhancement techniques, I would use this term source mass optimization and it summarizes whatever I can do on the source of the light, turn on and off individual uh, features, tricks I can play on the mask of the light that is adding extra features or adding phase shift to uh, essentially help me achieve a better resolution 
and it has re it has uh, given rise to this new uh, field uh, in the semiconductor industry which is known as computational lithography are uh, using uh, a lot of computation so all this requires a lot of uh, very high end servers uh, in fact, a new set of uh, skill set of people who know uh, a, a lot of things about computation, who know a lot of things about uh, Fourier transforms and so on, which by the way, I used to dread when I was a student. And uh, they, they essentially use a lot of this computational power uh, to use uh, to help you uh, achieve uh, print uh, uh, finer strokes using this uh, thicker brush and uh, this field has really taken off in the last 10 years and this is these bag of tricks have allowed us to use this uh, uh, 193 nanometer of light and taken us all the way to 65 nanometer node using all these set of tricks.